morning and welcome to Morning Devotion with me. Everybody needs reminders. Sometimes it's reminders just to wake up. It's a new day. Another time the reminder might be for some important event. It might be somebody's birthday. It might be some anything else. But we need reminders in our lives to keep us focused. And this morning I want to remind us of something very, very important. Usually when we are faced with fear, we forgot simple things. And some of these simple things are the most important things. And this morning I want to remind us that we are the body of Christ. Throughout the history, the Bible taught us that God called people to obey His word. He started called people like Abraham. He called Jacob, he called Noah, there were so many of them. But he called them to be his people. And he promised to be with them. And they will be his people. And he will be their God. Israel was not really favored because of for their own sake. But as witness to God's love for the entire world. Although Israel often forgot God's word, they sometimes ignored it. Or sometimes simply just forget about the word of God. And after their continued failure, did God send Christ as his Messiah. He was the one sent by God to initiate a new kingdom. Jesus became the most transparent witness to God's truth. His person was so stunning that even the angels celebrated his birth. Soon, O oh priest! Listen to his inspirational, youthful wisdom. And people flocked to see him. But it was not long. And a few years later, the Jews brought charges of blasphemy against him. And he was subsequently put on trial and he was crucified. And by his life of perfect obedience, did Jesus became the perfect sacrifice for our sin. And through his resurrection, did he brought forth a new movement, a new community of believers. This man and woman was called to tell the world that Jesus is still alive. This new community is called his church. And remember what Apostle Paul said about this church? He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, he said, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one is part of it. And after Christ's ascension to heaven, his people became his hands and his feet on this planet. They become, became his embodiment. That means when people looked at them, they had to see Christ. So if someone needed to be comforted, it became their job. And if someone was heartbroken, they ought to care. If someone was sick, they need to assist. If someone was hopeless, they needed to give hope. When it was dark, they needed to give assurance. And when someone doubted, they were supposed to be bold and say, Don't worry, it is well. Those who looked at these new found family, these new believers, when they looked at them, they called them those that are on the way. Others refer to them as the Ecclesia. The ones that are called out of this world. Now Apostle Paul said, we are that body of Christ. Meaning, when people looked at us, they should see him in us. And since each one of us is part of their body, are we looking like him now? Are we in fear now? Are we doing what he expects us to do? Perhaps each of us should ask this question. What would Jesus expect this body to do now? The believers of this body was equipped with various gifts. They are empowered by a unique source called the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is the new advocate when they can't speak for themselves. The very same Holy Spirit is there, there to remind them of their work. It enables the gift the body needs to continue. It is the reason why the church should be bold and should not forget about the source of their strength. Now, 
we should be like Apostle Peter and say, Jesus, He is Lord. He is alive. This morning, I want the church to be bold and hold God's word, the Bible, as authoritative. And depends on God's presence and power through His Spirit. It is not just an organization. The church is an organism, a living body of a living Christ. Some nations may the church be treated like an outlaw, but to us, it is the worldwide witness of the gospel of Christ. The church should be seen as militant because all believers fight against evil in obedience to the divine call. The very same church should be seen as triumphant because all the deceased believers live in heaven with God and is pictured in the book of Revelations as enjoying continued fellowship with God. This morning, I want to remind everyone that the church is a life-giving, life-enabling community, a sanctuary in a wounded world. The church, at its best, is a model of God's love, peace, and joy as alternative to greed, fear, and hurt. You want to know why? Because it is the body of Christ.